you know, did your preparation as a PhD student, you know, prepare you for doing that? Or what did you have to learn to do differently now that you're, you're uh, CEOs? Uh, so for uh, my PhD was actually in something completely unrelated to uh, the plastic problem. So I was working on uh, metal organic frameworks, which is really, really small scale. Uh, we're talking about like you would measure out two milligrams of zinc and hopefully you'd get an absorbent material for CO2 capture and storage. So for me, it was really switching that mindset over from like, uh, okay, how are we going to do this on a small scale and get it to work to, okay, we're going to start off on a larger scale and then we're going to scale it up. So what are we using and how are we going to, um, how is that going to impact like down the road? Uh, so for example, it was, uh, if you choose the wrong solvents in the first place, um, what's that going to affect going towards regulation? Um, and, and yeah, so it was, uh, it was kind of a, a switch between thinking of kind of that, that at the moment, I need to get this paper out for my PhD. How, what do I need to do to get this done? To, okay, I'm gonna solve a, a problem, but what's gonna happen in, in like 10 years? Is this gonna affect something? Yeah, it was. it's an interesting switch to say the least. Yeah, I completely second everything that Samantha said. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a big shift uh, when you dump from out of the lab and now you wanna uh, solve a crisis that is affecting millions and millions of people. It is a big switch and you have to really uh, be able to adapt and be flexible. Like uh, when we do these experiments in the lab during my PhD, I was making small quantities of these materials and I was I was thinking, could we batch fabricate them? And yes, there were strategies of doing that that was in place, but we hadn't really um, figured out. Like if you now switch to making, I don't know, a thousand times larger volume of these particles for your treatment, would the recipe have to be optimized again? How How, how tricky is that process going to be? And um, you also have to think about, is the industry going to be ready to accept um, these nanoparticles or nanostructures for cleaning? And most likely from our early interactions, we realize they're not. It's, it's, it's something, even if you can guarantee it's safe and you hit in the testing, there are uh, people who are hesitant to us that. So then we had to, after my PhD finished, I had to really figure out how do I encase these uh, structures into a, into a package that is acceptable in terms of regulation, in terms of customers, and it doesn't make them kind of, uh, you know, get nervous about uh, taking on a new material that they have never used before. So we really had to reinvent the wheel and try to figure out how we don't lose the functionality and the properties of the material, of nanomaterials, and how we can still keep them in the catalyst but encase them in a way that you can easily upscale, you can batch fabricate, and if you give your recipe to an industrial manufacturing partner, they can follow it. So it should not be that tricky. So there was a lot of hard work that went into that process, and um, that was not something I thought about doing during my PhD. Like Samantha said, the idea was let's publish something or, you know, let's try more things without thinking how are you going to convince uh, you know, a, a customer in a different country that this is the right technology for him. Uh, so yeah, there's something you have to do, and I think I think all entrepreneurs go through that uh, very interesting journey. Huh?